Well, I wanted to thank you for watching our YouTube channel and for those of you supporting our efforts to produce these videos. Thank you, thank you. You are part of spreading the gospel around the world. If you're not a partner, prayerfully consider joining our efforts to help others the way you've been helped through the teachings. We can only imagine all the places God sends these videos once we post them online. But because it's filled with His Word, we know it's bringing light into dark places. Scan our QR code and give today. It's a decision that provides everlasting benefits to you and those waiting to see these messages. This program is made possible by the partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries. You know, every morning you should give all of you to God. God, I give you my mind, I give you my mouth, I give you my hands, I give you my feet. Serve God with your whole life. I do what I do because I've seen God's power transform my own life and He will do it for you. The key to everything is found in God's Word. I'm Joyce Meyer and I believe that God can heal you everywhere you hurt. Well, thank you for joining me today for enjoying everyday life. You know, the Word of God is full of things that we are told to do or not to do that put us in a position, if we obey them, of really being able to enjoy our everyday life. And one of those things is to be thankful instead of murmuring and grumbling and complaining and fault-finding, to look for things to be thankful about. I'm going to teach again today on how being thankful causes you to be generous. We need to remember how powerful Thanksgiving is. The power of thank you. There's weakness in complaining, but there's power in gratitude. Today I want to talk to you about how a grateful person is also a generous person. And I don't know about you, but I think that generosity is absolutely beautiful. And you know, God is a generous God. One of His names in the Old Testament was El Shaddai, and that means the God of more than enough. God never does just what He barely has to do to get by, but He always does more than enough, and I think that we should be the same way. John Bunyan said, You have not lived today until you have done something for someone who can never repay you. I love that. I love all the giving that I do to help preach the gospel, but I love to be a blessing to people. So many people in the world are hurting. So many people really, to be honest, never have any, anyone give them anything. I mean, I've done things for different people that are not even believers and had several of them say, nobody's ever done anything like this for me in my whole life. And you know, in our Christian community, we are accustomed to blessing one another and giving, but we've got a whole world full of people out there that that's a whole new concept to them. And I think one of the ways that we can actually spread the gospel is by getting out in the world and just living the life that Jesus has told us to live. And one of the things that he has instructed us to do is to be generous. God is very generous to us. And when we're generous to other people, I believe it shows that we are thankful for what God has done for us. I believe there's a very close connection between a person who has a grateful heart and a person who has a generous heart. When I have my prayer time in the morning, it always includes an abundance of thankfulness for my blessings. I start wanting to do something for somebody else as soon as I do that. I'm telling you, I mean, it's the absolute truth. When I, the more thankful I get, the more I want to do something for somebody else. I'll start praying for God to show me somebody, something that I can do for somebody else. And I can tell you, I spent most of my life not being like that. And I believe that a thankful person is a happy person, and a generous person is a happy person. God is a giver. And when you respond to Him by giving to others, it puts a smile on His face and a smile on yours. Acts 20.35 says, In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work we must help the weak, 
remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Think about that. We all love to get things. Sadly, most of our prayers are full of things that we would like God to do for us. But how about when you pray asking God to show you what you have that you can give away? Or to show you what you can do for somebody else that day to put a smile on their face. Once again, the world is full of hurting people. And we need to be doing things for other people. You don't have to wait for something good to happen to you before you start being good to somebody else. You can actually start the cycle going in your life of being good to somebody else first. And I can tell you, you can never outgive God. He said that he would give us seed to sow and bread to eat. That means that God will give us what we need for our own lives, but he'll give us an abundance of other things and, and finances that we can always be a blessing to other people. Live a lifestyle of giving. Live to give. What does science say about gratitude? I always get such a big kick out of this when science comes up with something that the Word of God has already said for forever. They have studied gratitude for two decades, that's 20 years, and have discovered that it has value and benefits. Gee, I think God told us that already. Science says being thankful makes you happier, promotes better sleep, keeps us healthier, and makes us more generous. Wow. I read a story about a blind boy who sat on the steps of a building with a hat by his feet. He held up a sign that read, I am blind, please help me. There were only a few coins in his hat. A man came by and changed his sign to read, Today is a beautiful day, but I cannot see it. His hat soon began to fill up. Both signs spoke the truth by saying the boy was blind. But the second sign conveyed to everyone how grateful they should be because they could see. When he said today is a beautiful day, but I can't see it, then people suddenly realized, well, I can see it. And that made them want to help him. Realizing that they were blessed made them want to give. Thankful people want to give. Luke 18, 1 through 9. I love this story. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. And a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. And he was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. And the Bible also says that he was short. He wasn't very tall. And there was a big crowd and he couldn't see over the crowd. And he knew Jesus was coming and he really wanted to see him. And so he climbed up a sycamore fig tree in order to be able to see him because Jesus was coming that way. And I thought about that for a little bit last night, and I thought about some of the trees out in my backyard. And, you know, climbing a tree wouldn't be all that easy. Maybe a 10-year-old kid could climb up a tree pretty easy, but I think I'd have a tough time climbing a tree at this stage in my life. So... Zacchaeus put some effort into wanting to see Jesus. He was determined. When Jesus reached the spot where Zacchaeus was, he looked up. Now, why did Jesus look up at that particular point? Something in that man's spirit touched something in Jesus' spirit that caused him to see Zacchaeus. And when he saw him, he said, Zacchaeus, come down, do it immediately, because I must stay at your house today. Wow. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. And all the people saw this, and they began to mutter and to murmur, just exactly what I'm talking about today. They're complaining because Jesus is going to go to his house and not go to their house. Why not be thankful? God, it's so awesome that you're going to go to Zacchaeus' house. Thank you for being a blessing to him. He had gone to be the guest of a sinner, and they didn't approve. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, now listen to this. Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. 
And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Now you see, Zacchaeus was a tax collector and they were probably among some of the most hated people. Tax collectors had a certain amount of money they had to collect for the Roman government, but then they could tack on more and keep it for themselves. And so most of them were very crooked and they were thieves and people just hated the tax collectors. Well, apparently Zacchaeus was kind of tired of living life the way he was. We don't know exactly what caused him to change, to want to see Jesus. But whatever happened between him and Jesus, something touched him. And he's, the first thing that Zacchaeus wanted to do after Jesus touched his life was he wanted to start giving. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that is awesome. Let me ask you a question. Maybe you have to think about it for a while. Are you generous or are you stingy? Do you go the extra mile and give all that you can? Or do you give the least amount that you feel like you can to satisfy God? You know, I believe that we should give as much as we possibly can. Zacchaeus must have been tired of living the way that he was. And I tell you, a lot of people, when they come to Christ, they're tired of living the way that they've been living. And what he does for us is amazing. And I'll just be honest with you and tell you, if, if you're saved, if Jesus has saved you, and you just still don't want to be a giver, you have no generosity in you, then you probably need to go back and talk to God again because I don't see how we could not. If we're thankful for what God's done in our lives, go on, if we are thankful for what God has done in our lives, how can we not want to give? Most churches or conferences you go to when they receive offerings, they call them love offerings. And that's really what they are. When we give, we're showing our love for God and we're showing our love for other people. And we should be very happy to do it. Offering time in a service should be one of the most joyous parts of the service. A lot of people use the offering time as a time to go to the bathroom or go get a drink of water. We should be very respectful to offering time and be as generous as we possibly can. Esther is another good example in the Bible. Esther had successfully saved her people from the wicked Haman who had a plan to have all the Jews killed. And God raised Esther up for such a time as this, her uncle said, and it's a long story, I can't tell you the whole story, but by being obedient to God, she was able to save her whole entire nation of people. And it was such a joyous occasion. And so... They set the 14th and the 15th day of the month of Adar, which we don't have that month anymore, but that's what they called it back then, as a day for celebration and for feasting. So every year on the day when they had been delivered from their enemies, they feasted and they celebrated, and guess what else they did? They sent gifts to one another and they sent gifts to the poor. I love that. God saved them. And the first thing they wanted to do, or were told to do, was once a year celebrate and send gifts to one another and send portions to the poor. Let me say it again. If you're thankful for what God has done in your life, if you're really thankful for what He's done in your life, don't take it for granted. Maybe you've been saved so long that you, you don't even realize anymore what a blessing it is. Just think about what Jesus has done for you. And don't just think about it once a year on Easter or Christmas, but think about it every day. And it will make you a generous person. Giving to others was one of the ways that the Israelites celebrated what God had done in their life. What if every year... 
on the date that you gave your life to Christ, say you gave your life to Christ on January the 20th of some year. Well, what about if every year on January the 20th you celebrated and you sent gifts to somebody or, or just a gift to somebody and you sent something to the poor? Ooh, that would make the devil mad if we did that. You know, we don't even want to take the time to celebrate our birthdays, let alone remember to celebrate the things that God has done in our life. I tell you, God has done so much for me. I was such a horrible mess when God got hold of me. And what he has done for me, how he has changed me, the life he has given me, I think it's worth being generous to other people as a way of saying thank you to God. God often instructed the Israelites to celebrate times each year where they had been delivered and he had done special things for them. What about some of the great men and women in the Bible that were generous? You know, Abraham was a very generous man. Lot was his nephew and he had helped Lot. And God blessed them both so much that they had so many cattle that for them to all try to feed their cattle on the same land was causing problems between their herdsmen. The Bible says that there was strife between their herdsmen. And Abraham went to Lot and he said, you choose whichever portion of the land you want and I'll take the part you don't choose. Well, Abraham didn't need to do that. He was the older man. He was the one who had Help Lot. Lot would have had nothing if it wouldn't have been for Abraham. And sure enough, Lot chose the best portion of the valley, which left Abraham with the part that wasn't as good. But you know what? God took him up on a high place and he said, look around you, north, south, east, and west, and however far you can see, I will give that to you. You cannot outgive God. He was generous to his nephew when he did not have to be. And God said, now I'll give you everything that you can see. Joseph was generous. His brothers treated him so cruelly. They threw him into a pit, sold him to slave traders, and told his father that an animal, a wild animal, had killed him. And he, he just had so many unfair things happen in his life. He became a, a servant in Potiphar's house in Egypt and... Potiphar's wife took a liking to Joseph and wanted him to have sex with her, and he refused because he was a man of God. And because he refused, she lied about him, and he ended up in prison for 13 years for something he didn't do. While he was in prison, he helped a baker and a butler get out of prison by interpreting a dream. And he said, remember me when you get back in the palace. Well, they didn't remember him. They forgot all about him. But you know what? He didn't get bitter. He didn't get resentful. He didn't murmur. He didn't complain. He just kept being a man of God. You know, we need to learn that no matter what anybody else does, our job is to keep doing what's right. Come on, somebody needs to hear that today. No matter what somebody else is or is not doing for you, your job is to keep doing what's right. And if you keep doing what's right, even when the right thing is not happening to you, God will in due time reward you, and when he does, it is going to be something outstanding that nobody else could have done for you. Well, Joseph eventually did get out of prison by interpreting a dream that the king had. And long story short, he eventually became like second in control in all of Egypt. The only person that had any more power than him was Pharaoh himself. And a famine was coming, and Joseph, being a wise man, had stored up grain enough that would last through the seven years of famine that God had warned him about in this dream. And Pharaoh put him in charge of distributing this grain. Well... His family, his father, and his brothers lived a distance away, but they knew that the only grain that was available was in Egypt, so they came to Egypt to get some grain. 
Well, they had to go before Joseph to ask for this grain, but they didn't know it was Joseph. They didn't recognize him, but he recognized them. And boy, what an opportunity he had to get them back for what they did to him. Sometimes we delight in that, don't we? Somebody did something awful to us, and now they need help, and it's our opportunity to get them back. Don't ever do that. God does not want you to do that. He, God is your vindicator. Always walk in love with people, no matter what they've done to you, and pray for them. Pray for them to be blessed. And then when you do that, you open up the door for God to do great things in your life. And listen to what Joseph said. He said, don't be afraid of me. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, which is the saving of many lives. In other words, Joseph is saying, you did something terrible to me and you, you thought you were harming me, but actually you were doing something that turned out good because God used what you did. He used the evil thing that you did to put me in a position where I could be in a place to save many, many people. What's one of our favorite scriptures in Romans 8, 28? All things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Joseph was a generous man. He fed them. He told them that he would take care of them. They didn't have to worry. They didn't deserve it, but he did it. That's what a generous person does. They don't just give to people who deserve it. They give, to be honest, because they have to. I kind of feel like at this point in my life, I have to give. I am not happy if I don't get to give. Do you know, every morning you should give all of you to God. God, I give you my mind, I give you my mouth, I give you my hands, I give you my feet. I want to do what you want me to do. I want to go where you want me to go. I want to say what you want me to say. I want to think what you want me to think. Serve God with your whole life. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Susanna helped support Jesus' ministry and his disciples out of their own money. Do you know the way we use our money says a lot about how thankful we are for the life that we have. Second Corinthians 9, 6, and 7 says, The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. God loves a cheerful giver. And then one last thing I want to say before I tell you about our offer today. Under the Old Covenant, they had many different types of offerings. And one of the offerings that they had was called a thank offering. And at different times throughout the year, they would bring a special gift to God just to say thank you for what you've done for me. Well, we don't live under the Old Covenant anymore, but we certainly can learn from some of their example. And I think it would be great if you would go beyond your tithe or your regular offerings or whatever you're used to doing and just occasionally give a thank offering to God, a special offering to say, thank you, God, for what you have done in my life. Every month, I set aside a certain amount of money at the beginning of the month that I want to give throughout that month to people in need or people who need a blessing. You know, somebody doesn't have to be poor to need a blessing. You might know a rich person that still needs a blessing. Show your, show your gratitude by being generous. I believe that gratitude, thankfulness, and generosity go together. And I can tell you, the more generous you are, the happier you're going to be. Winston Churchill said, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. You know, I've written a book that I'm very pleased with called The Power of of thank you. Such a simple book, such a simple principle, but life changing. Learn to be a grateful person. We're offering you this book today for your gift to the ministry of any amount, and we promise that we will use what you send in to try to help as many people as we possibly can. Be as generous as you can be. Maybe you have a little more than somebody else does, and you can send in 
a larger gift to help make up the difference for some of the people who can't send very much. I really want you to get this book on the power of thank you. I believe it's going to add a lot of joy to your life. Thank you for joining us today, and I pray that you will join us again tomorrow. Are you focused on your blessings, or are you focused on your problems? You know, whatever you focus on is what becomes bigger in your life. Can God use a simple concept to help us through life's challenges? I've written a book called The Power of Thank You. Such a simple book, such a simple principle, but life changing. Learn to be a grateful person. I believe it's going to add a lot of joy to your life. The Power of Thank You, now available for your offer of any amount. Contact us at JoyceMeyer.org or call us at 1-800-709-2895. I've been a partner of Joyce Meyer Ministries for five years. Six months, 20 years. Since about 2008, I have had panic attacks in the car. Joyce's podcast helps me start my day right and get to work. I just love that Joyce is very matter-of-fact. She just speaks from the, her heart. She tells stories that... Uh, you know, are very relatable. She's taught me how to be a Christian. I knew how to be a sinner, but I didn't know how to be a Christian. She's just made a huge difference in my life. Six months ago, I was like, you know what? Joyce has done so much for me. I'll start partnering with her. A couple of years ago, I said, well, I need to start giving back and not just taking. And I know that uh, it goes more than just to the TV ministry. It goes all around the world. When I give what little bit of money that I'm able to give, then she takes that and does something bigger and better with it. Just do it. Would you love to know more about God's will for your life? Who wouldn't, right? So mark your calendars. It's a live online event from the comfort of your own house. At Home with Joyce, discovering your purpose. Gain a deeper understanding of God's purpose for you and be part of an interactive conversation with our Talk It Out friends. It all happens Tuesday, April 30th at noon Eastern. Register today for the special online event at JoyceMeyer.org. I love that magazine she sends out. There's something in there for everybody. It's just brought about so much change in my life personally. It's always an encouragement for you to want to do more ministry. Get your free subscription to Enjoying Everyday Life magazine today at JoyceMeyer.org. Read encouraging articles from Joyce, updates from Hand of Hope, and much more. Reading through the magazine confirms for me that God's at work. You just know. I mean, you know. It's like God puts such a strong desire in your heart. It's almost like you're captivated by it and you couldn't hardly do anything else. Captivated, that's a good word. I, I really felt a, a strong sensing of God's presence and, and I became more interested in the Word as a result of that. And then the more I listened to the Word, the more I was amazed at what people are really anointed to teach were getting out of the Word. Mm -hmm. I had heard the Word, of course, in church, but little bits and pieces of it and, and not in the way that I was hearing it now. And when God does captivate your heart with something, it's, it's almost kind of hard not to believe it. When God awakens you to His presence, then everything begins to be a lot more meaningful. We hope you enjoy today's program. For more information, visit JoyceMeyer.org. This program has been made possible by the partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.